folks, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Kat. I'm a licensed and registered dietitian nutritionist and online nutrition coach. I don't have coconut here today. She is actually asleep and she looks so sweet. Her, Loki, and Onyx were all sleeping and so I didn't want to disturb them. But today we are talking about nutrition related MLMs and the dieting world and how putting them together, combining them can really be some of the most manipulative companies out there and just how toxic it can be for true health. So let's go ahead and jump in. Everything in this video is 100% my opinion. I will be leaving all of my information down below and I will be sharing parts of my opinion that are founded in facts that I have found online from reputable sources. Also, I recently found out a new product from It Works. We're gonna be talking about that at the end of this video, so <laughs> stick around for that because like it's, it's bad, it's bad in my opinion. So let's go. All right, so today, it's been something that I've been meaning to talk to or talk about for a while. I actually got this idea kind of from a viewer looking at the dieting world within a specific thing, not MLM, but I was thinking this is something that needs to be talked about. And I thought about focusing in on the dieting world and when that collides with the nutrition related MLMs. Now I do want to be clear that when I am talking about dieting, I am not referencing any kind of medical nutrition therapy or MNT for short. That is adjustment in intake for medical purposes and is evidence-based practice and that's completely fine. I love doing MNC. And while that itself is not always perfect, it's not the same thing as dieting in the context of what we're talking about in this video. I will be talking about dieting as the main focus of this video and the problems around it. If you do feel like that might be triggering, then you might want to go ahead and skip on this video. We have a very big, <laughs> very noticeable cultural obsession with looking young, with looking like we haven't aged, which is the same as looking young. We have an obsession about changing certain parts of our bodies, an obsession with looking like what is acceptable in the culture in this decade. And it changes by decade, it feels like. The current body goals in 2021 is different from what it was when I was a kid. Even having something like big lips when I was a kid was something that people would get made fun of. There's an obsession with making it look like we haven't had children and the whole idea of getting your body back. There's an obsession with looking conventionally attractive with whatever the body goals are going on at that time. And that's completely understandable, but I can't help to see just how much society plays a role in making people feel self-conscious and how they feel like they need to do that for various reasons. This is not blaming the person. We are not a victim blaming channel over here, but it's calling out and blaming the system that makes people feel this way. It's calling out the companies who are profiting off people's insecurities and relying on those insecurities to stay for them to make more profits down the line. So what's wrong with diets and what's wrong with MLMs that have diets? People are just trying to get healthier and better themselves, right? Let's talk about it. Tracy Mann is a professor at the University of Minnesota. In 2007, she started the Health and Eating Lab there at the University of Minnesota. And that lab applies basic psychology to health problems in individuals' daily lives. It's truly fascinating. And that work is primarily in the area of dieting and self-control of eating. So super cool information. Her work on dieting specifically specifically has really shifted many health professionals and how they approach a more haze aligned practice, which including myself is something that I have seen. As always, I'll leave a link to this in my description, but I really wanted to read this out because it is very powerful in my opinion. It is well established that dieters are able to lose weight in the short run, but tend to gain it back over time. In 2007, the graduate students 
in her psychology of eating seminar and herself they did a review painstaking review of every randomized controlled trial of diets they could find including a follow-up of at least two years and in 2013 they updated it with studies they had missed as well as newer ones and the results were clear although dieters in the study had lost weight in their first 9 to 12 months over the next two to five years they had gained back all but an average of 2.1 of those pounds. Participants in the non-dieting weightless control groups gained weight during those same years, but an average of just 1.2 pounds. The dieters had little benefit to show for their efforts and the non-dieters did not seem harmed by their lack of effort. In sum, it appears that the weight regain is a typical long-term response to dieting rather than the exception. The rest of this post is really insightful as to talking about why those responses or, or why those results are seen. It goes into lots of different reasons that that could be. So we have the stats on diets and we're constantly learning more. If you are successful on the diet, we know that most people gain it back within two to five years and a good amount of those people gain additional weight. And not only that, if you aren't successful, you're often gaslit. Gaslit that you didn't do the plan right, that you didn't stick to it well enough. When it doesn't work for you, it's your fault. We know that diets are temporary. We know that they often lack a lot of nutrients. We know that they unintentionally promote overconsumption whenever that diet ends. We know that they can sometimes be dangerous and include unregulated pills. We know that it doesn't fit people long term and overall it just doesn't promote long term sustainable habits that grow that food body congruence and empowered eating where people can approach food with curiosity, compassion, and context. They see food as good or bad. There's no nuance within them. They also don't take into account that size can be related to trauma and that doing anything to change the body can really not be healthy, not just talking about metabolically, but psychologically not be the best thing for that person to do. You can waste brain space, you can lose money, you can waste energy and time on a diet. Now here is where MLMs come into play. We know that most people in MLMs don't really make a lot of money and in a lot of cases even lose money, per the FTC. And we know that people waste brain space, they waste time, they waste energy on them as well. So on the FTC website, it talks about or asks the question of, is MLM right for you? And there are a couple of parts that I wanted to talk about to highlight. They ask, what are your income goals? And they mentioned that most people who join MLMs and work hard make little to no money and some of them lose money. And then underneath, they also ask, can you afford the risk of money and time? So even if you're not concerned about the money, they talk about consider the time demands of the business. They talk about some of the reasons why MLM might take up a whole lot of time. So with dieting, you put in a lot of effort and the majority regain weight plus more. With MLM, you put a lot of effort into sharing and recruiting, and the majority make little to no or even lose money. I am not making these up. These are not my opinion. It's not like I want these to be true. If I could wave a magic wand and make them not true, then I would, but I can't. These are not opinions. The amount of time and energy that goes into both dieting and MLMs is just not worth it when you look at what are the outcomes. And the fact that so many of them are combined makes it so much worse in my opinion. And even worse than wasting time and wasting mental space, while not everyone who goes on a diet will develop a disordered eating habits or a full out eating disorder, people with an eating disorder will diet. And so with that being known, and with eating disorders being the most lethal kind of mental disorder, why don't we just focus on building healthy habits that support physical, mental, social, and emotional well-being, and not focusing on changing body size, not being so focused on what that scale says. This is why a Hayes approach is so important in my opinion. Now Hayes is defined as health at every size, not healthy 
at every size, like so many people like to say. Hayes encourages eating in an overall flexible manner that values pleasure and honors our hunger, our fullness, our, our satiety, also our appetite. It encourages finding joy in movement of one's body and encourages respecting bodies that are different in different shapes and different sizes. It's not saying that everybody is healthy at every size. It is talking about how we can approach health at any size. Health at Every Size principles help us advance social justice, create an inclusive and respectful community, and support people of all sizes in finding compassionate ways to take care of themselves. Basic components include respect, critical awareness, and compassionate self-care. Hayes is rooted in social justice. Its history is absolutely fascinating. Let me know if you would like a deep dive on that. It is truly, truly amazing with what it started as. And it's really frustrating now how it has kind of gotten a different meaning to it and kind of gotten whitewashed in certain areas. And something that I've mentioned in previous videos is how a lot of companies like to co-opt certain words that are often used within the Hayes community and end up selling lifestyles that are actually still diets. Check out my Arbon videos if you want some examples of that as well as any of my other nutrition related MLM video reviews. Some argue like specifically on the Arbon one, some will argue that it is just a lifestyle. You're doing this to find any food sensitivities and find out what works for your body. But in medical nutrition therapy, remember that is a very real thing. It is evidence-based. Their program is not what we do to find food sensitivities using medical nutrition therapy. It's a diet. Same thing with Beachbody, It Works, Isogenics, diet. MLM also makes toxic positivity something that is not just within your business dreams, but also within your body and your health dreams. But nutrition work isn't always happy. It's not always a positive thing when we're focusing on building nutrition habits that promote health. This book, Exposure Therapy for Eating Disorders, is not a happy book. It is not a positive book. Like, the outcome is positive. But there's a lot that goes into doing exposure therapy for eating disorders that toxic positivity just doesn't fit alongside with it. But with a lot of the companies that will have these posts like the Nutrition Guru Magnetic Poetry video that I talked about where I highlighted some of those kind of thoughts, those toxic positivity sayings around nutrition. Toxic positivity in the dieting world and in the MLM world don't allow for very real and deep nutrition work that needs to be done in so many cases that is just not fun. And the deep work that occurs when you're trying to shed dieting culture roles and building a healthy relationship with food for life. Diet advertisements that are targeting women and men rely on the idea that your happiness and your health, your ability to be seen as desirable is dependent on your appearance. And you see that by the people who are in the pictures, who are in the advertisements, because we can't see health based on how somebody looks. Yes, there are extreme cases, I don't wanna hear about that, but in general, you don't know somebody's lab work depending on their size. You don't know their cardiovascular health. We don't know that, but there is a certain look that you will see on those advertisements most of the time. And yes, many people do gain more confidence whenever they do change their body size. That is something that a lot of people talk about. Even if they're not exactly where they want to be, they'll still say that they have more confidence overall, which is a great thing. And again, we're not victim blaming here. We're not talking about that. We are talking about the companies and the dieting industry overall. But that confidence is rooted in the society treating people better at that size. It's not the confidence of doing what you set out to do and just, you know, feeling better. That might be part of it, but a big part of the confidence is just how you're treated, which is ultimately because of societal ideals, which is ultimately dependent on how and what the society deems as acceptable appearance-wise. 
So what do diets and MLMs have in common? One is selling a dream of a better life once you reach that better body, when your body is changed. One is selling a dream of a better life when you have limitless income. Both have evidence that isn't strong in supporting those dreams for the vast majority of people who try. Both are selling stories based off fear. If you look at the kind of marketing that diets do, it's fear-based marketing most of the time or inspiration-based marketing most of the time, which there can be a time and place for both of those in a very healthy way, but I think that that's overdone in that industry. Same thing with MLMs. A lot of times you'll hear facts tell, stories sell. They want you to sell off of the stories. Selling stories based off fear and inspiration. Both rely on people's anxiety of their bodies or their lives to drive sales. In the dieting world, you're never good enough. There's always something else to work on. In the MLM world, you're never good enough. You need to keep sharing, you need to keep recruiting, you need to keep inspiring your team to do the same. In dieting culture, there's always another diet that is just around the corner that's gonna fix everything and make your body perfect. In MLMs, there's always someone right around the corner that's gonna say yes and make your business soar. You just have to get through all of the no's. The nature of diets is to sell off body insecurities. You generally don't feel great. You're not feeling your best whenever you decide to do a diet. And with MLMs, most people don't join when their life is going great and they have great things going on for them in general. Most of the time, they're in a vulnerable place. Maybe they just moved. Maybe they recently lost their job or had a sudden decline in their income. Maybe they are a military spouse or a new mom or a student, they're looking for money, they're looking for health, they're looking for a community. The MLM has the answers, it's sold that dream. The very nature of MLM is to recruit people who were in your similar situation, in that vulnerable situation, where you were when you joined. People join diets because they believe that it has all the answers. People join MLMs because they believe that it has all the answers. It's predatory. They are predatory. Both exploit, gaslight, and victimize vulnerable people. They do that by manipulating them to believe a dream and believe that that diet or company has the key to their dream, their dream life, their dream body, whatever that dream is. And as a final kind of major point, that I really have a problem with is that a lot of the distributors who are recommending these kind of diets and helping people within groups implement those diets, they aren't usually qualified to be able to do that. I have seen people, non-qualified people, give health recommendations that really aren't the best idea, that really can impact someone's health negatively and in a very scary way. And we've mentioned those in some of the videos past. Remember, it's very possible to focus on health without subscribing to diet culture. So now that you've made it this far, let's chat a little bit about It Works brand new product called Slimming Gummies. All right, so I'm gonna show a couple of videos, two of them, and I'm gonna be pausing them every 30 seconds or so so that I can avoid any copyright claims or anything. Ever feel like you can't get your workouts in? Are you spending too much time in the kitchen preparing healthy meals? Did you know that more than half of Americans struggle to lose weight? You're not alone. Start your journey today. You can lose 31 pounds in 90 days. Shrink your weight. 31 pounds in 90 days. That seems pretty excessive, but. Baseline and burn fat. With our results driven products, Slimming Gummies, Skinny Brew, and Thermofight X to the X, you can see long lasting weight loss results. How you ask? It's as easy as reaching for Slimming Gummies instead of a sugary snack. With Morisil, they'll help you shrink your waist, slim hips, and lower your- Okay, so if you are choosing that instead of a sugary snack, yeah, there's gonna be a little bit of change in outcome. It's not the gummies itself. BMI. It's as easy as switching your morning coffee to Skinny Brew, a fat-burning coffee that also curbs cravings. Regular coffee curbs cravings too. That's what caffeine does. One of the things that it does that it can do. 
It's as easy as taking Thermofite X to the X twice a day with any meal you can get. Can you imagine having something, eating right next to your daughter and having something that clearly says, what does that say? Thermogenics? I did a, I did a v review on this before, but I can't remember the name. Thermophyte X. Thermogenics. <laughs> it's like isogenics, but no, it's called Thermophyte X. Can you imagine having a meal with your daughter right there while she's doing her homework or something else and you eating and then taking that Thermophyte X right in front of her? That is one thing that is not recommended <laughs> to do in, when you're trying to build a child grow them to have a healthy relationship with food and body that's not appropriate to lose an average of 31 pounds in 90 days again not victim blaming i mean this is a, an actress but this is what what is expected when you have this kind of rampant diet culture in the society it's not that person's fault it is the companies who promote that and who make that it's their fault. I'm blaming them, not the individual person. It's easier than ever. When I start to blame them is when they start to have other people do it. To say goodbye to 2020 and hello results in 2021. Okay, so let's go ahead and see another video that's specifically just about the slimming gummies. You feel like everything you eat goes straight to your waist and hips? Do you want to finally say goodbye to the stubborn weight around your belly? Now you can. Introducing Slimming Gummies, featuring clinically proven Morosil, a powerful blood orange super ingredient that's proven to help you shrink your waist and slim your hips by inches and lower your BMI. Target the fat that leads to love handles and slim... I hate that word, love handles. It's just... I don't know. ...down pinchable fat on your body's midsection. Best of all, by teaming Slimming Gummies with Thermophyte XX, you can also lose an average of 31 pounds in just 90 days. Slimming Gummies. It's time to say goodbye to stubborn weight around your belly and hello to results in 2021. So they said to pair it together with that in order to see that 31 days or 31 pounds in 90 days, right? Like that's what it said. Let's hear that again. Best of all, by teaming Slimming Gummies with Thermophyte XX, you can also lose an average of 31 pounds in just 90 days. Right. So those are available now, but let's talk about it. So Morosil appears to be the active ingredient here, but I couldn't find very much on Morosil. But what I did find was a study that they did with it for four weeks. And we can't extrapolate weight loss based on a four week study. On the It Works page, it says, Slimming gummies should be taken along with a calorie restricted diet for a minimum of 90 days. So in the video, they said to team it together with the Thermophyte X but in here they're saying it should be taken along with a calorie restricted diet. Well, if you're having a change in your intake, if you're having this calorie restricted diet after not having it, yeah, you're gonna see some changes. Morisil clinical study used a 400 milligram daily dosage, the equivalent of four gummies over 90 days. However, if you look at the label, one serving is two gummies, not the four gummies mentioned. Four gummies every single day for 90 days. Let's just figure it out. So one bottle is $39 with the loyal customer pricing, of course. And then there's also a two bottle special where you get it for $69, so you get a little savings there. So one bottle says 30 servings at the two gummy serving amount. So if you had four gummies, that would be 15 days where you would be able to do that. So we need six bottles. If we do the 69 to get that, we would get three orders of that. So that comes out to $207 in order to get what the study recommended as far as the daily dosage. Most people doing It Works don't have $207 to throw around at something like this. I would not tell any person who is a friend, family, acquaintance, not a friend, <laughs> Anybody who I work with, anybody on the street, I would not recommend this for them. Go spend that $200 on vegetables. Actual vegetables, please. All right, that's it for me, folks. Remember, it is very possible to focus on your health and not subscribe to diet culture. All right, I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Don't forget to subscribe, please.